Hey everyone, before we get into today's project, I just want to mention that I recently started a podcast with Jordan Crawford from George Woodshop and Joey Chalk from King Post Timberworks. While in no way is this podcast specific to Australia and New Zealand, the three of us did decide to make this podcast because we wanted to be able to talk about local materials, local pricing, and we wanted to be able to live stream at a time that was more applicable for the, the local community. We live stream the podcast every Thursday at 6 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time or 9 p.m. New Zealand Daylight Time. But if you can't catch it then, it will be on SoundCloud, YouTube, and iTunes. We're very excited about this and we hope you guys are too. So come say hi. And if podcasts are something that you're interested in, I've got some links down below where you can check it out. This is my little lunchbox planer and while it's great, one of the things that you don't get with these very compact planers is any sort of base or mobile stand to put it on. So up till now I've been storing in the corner and every time I need it, I pull it out, which just isn't working for me or my back anymore. So in this video, I'm gonna be making a mobile base for this planer, but this design would work for basically any lunchbox style fitness planer. Being shop furniture, I'm not gonna to spend too much money on the materials, so these are just basic pine two by fours. I've skip planned them, so they are basically square on all four sides. So the next step is gonna to be to start making up the leg assemblies. I'll notch a piece out of one of the boards the same depth as the thickness of this board and then glue that down. So the four legs are gonna receive a notch on this end and on this end. So to make the cut quicker, I've ganged these boards together. Now I can take one of these boards, lay that across and draw a line. Now at this stage, I normally use a circular saw to hog out all of that material, but I wanna try something different in this project. Being a shop project, this is the time to do it. I'm gonna use a hand saw to cut all of this material out, so hopefully it should only require two cuts. I seem to have had terrible luck with that whole method of using a circular saw to hog everything out, so I'm hoping that I might have better luck with this. After gluing the first half of the leg assemblies up, where I put the rails into those rabbits, I then went ahead and joined those together with the rest of the rails. There was a butt join using end grain, and that is an incredibly weak join. So I went ahead and glued up those short rails using the butt join, but all this was doing was securing the rails in place for the next step, which is to now come back and put some dowels through, which will give the join enough strength. I flipped the assembly over so I can add some casters, but the problem with this design is on this corner there's only space for three screws. So to get around this problem, I've got some extra scrap two by fours which I'll glue in place and then I can attach the caster to it. Thank you. 
All right, so that's the easy bit done. The cart is now made. That's all fully operational. Something that I want to include in this build is a way to collect the chips and dust as they get ejected from this thicknesser. Now this particular thicknesser kicks them out with enough force that I don't need a vacuum hooked up to it. I don't have a shop vac yet, so it's worked out pretty well. So what I want to do is create some kind of box that'll sit underneath the thicknesser with a hose connected to this ejection port and then all the dust and chips will be pushed through that hose into that box and that becomes my dust collection point. In the future, I might hook up a shop vac to that box so the box will sort of work as a first stage but for the meantime, that's gonna be my main dust collection point and it's working courtesy of the fact that this thicknesser kicks out the, the dust and chips with such a force. Okay, so that's the box mostly created. The last thing that needs to go on is a panel underneath because once this is full of dust, I need to get that out of there. So that bottom panel is going to be on hinges and there'll be a latch on this side, which I can flip. It'll drop the bottom out on top of the dustbin and all the dust will come out. So the next thing is to put on this panel with some hinges and a latch. Underneath the dust box, I've added these two casters and this extra piece of timber just to raise it up and make it level. And this is gonna help to... As I push it in, it now rolls back and ease, more easily slides in to its position. I'm eventually gonna to have to put on some kind of handle here because unfortunately being melamined is a bit heavy, uh, but it just makes getting it in and out a bit easier. I've put the box back together. We can see the port here on the one end. Unfortunately, that footage never made it off the camera, but basically all it was was me drilling a hole around 100 millimeters wide and installing a PVC stormwater drain section from the inside out, gluing and screwing it in place. Now, the next thing that needs to happen is for the air to come in, the air that's getting pushed in by the thicknesser, but then it's got to leave somewhere. So what I'm gonna do is take this furnace filter fabric and drill some big holes or a few small holes into this top panel. That way the air will come in, it'll come out the top of the box and then all the heavier particles will fall to the bottom. There is a chance that I might need to put some kind of a baffle on the inside directing the chips down and then the air can come up because I'm worried that this is sort of the, the, the chips are going to come in and try and exit straight away and while the furnace filter is gonna stop the, the dust from coming out, I don't just want it to immediately get clogged up. But what I'm gonna do is put it together like this, do a couple of tests. If I don't think that it's working properly, then I'll open up the sides, put in that baffle, and go from there. So there it is, done and dusted. And overall, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Almost all of the, the big chips are ending up in the bin. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. But the fine dust that it used to kick up 
all of that is getting trapped. So you can run the system without a dust mask and you, you can't even see any of that dust coming up. And that's the main thing that I was trying to, well, the main problem that I was trying to solve because I was caught by surprise when I used this the first time, I didn't realize how much fine dust it would kick up. I thought it was only gonna be chips. So this filter fabric or this furnace fabric is working really well at catching all of it. Now, in terms of the big chips, there are still quite a few coming out of the front of the thicknesser. And I don't know if that's just because I don't have enough suction on um, this extraction port. Now, I can only imagine that once you hook up a proper shop vac to this, you know, your four inch or 100 mil uh, proper big boy type uh, shop vac, that that will suck these chips that are blowing out the front, it will suck it back into the motor and into the system. They are the big chips though, so I'm not too concerned. They come out the front, they land on the floor, pretty easy to clean up. The main thing, as I say, is that fine dust is being caught and that was the priority for me for this build. So in terms of things that I might change in the future, this box is great because it's solid. I mean, it's, it's gonna last forever. It's rock solid. But the only problem is that it's a bit heavy. So getting it up onto the dustbin, it is a little bit cumbersome. And if I'd gone for something like a plastic bucket, it would have made things a lot easier. So I'll see how it goes. I'll use this for, for a while and see if I'm happy with it. If it becomes too much of a problem, then I'll probably just replace it for a plastic bucket, which might just be a little bit easier. But overall, I'm super happy with it. This is gonna make a huge difference to the air quality in the shop. I don't yet have a proper shop vac dust collection system. So for now, this is a really, really good solution until I can get this entire shop hooked up. So thanks again for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button. And if you feel like I've earned it or you want to see more projects like this, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you want to support me even further, I do have a Patreon page. The links will be below and I do have merchandise on sale. Thanks again and I'll talk to you guys soon.